Hi there, I'm Keith Cawley, and this is Thrive, the Bridgestone America's podcast where we explore our company through compelling conversations with teammates across our organization. We talk all the time about Bridgestone's evolution to become a sustainable solutions company, expanding on our core tire expertise to develop data-driven digital solutions. And while we very likely think of mobility concepts like fleet management or tire sensor platforms when we hear the word solutions, it's important to remember that every aspect of our complex company is moving together on this solutions journey. For instance, did you know that Bridgestone has a credit card company in its portfolio? CFNA, formerly known as Credit First National Association, offers payment solutions for our customers and consumers, and they're innovating in their space right alongside the rest of Bridgestone. Today, we talk to Brian Zimple, president of CFNA, about where his credit card division fits into the larger Bridgestone universe, how it's helping deliver on our North Star and Bridgestone E8 commitment, and some big partnership and expansion news that they're breaking right here on Thrive. We hope you enjoy this conversation. Well, we are joined today by Brian Zimple, and you are the president of Credit First National Association, also known as CFNA. And we're going to talk a little bit about exactly what that is and where it fits in Bridgestone. But Brian, thanks so much for joining us. Keith, it is an honor. As you know, I've been asking you, please put well, me on the podcast. And finally, it's come to fruition. And I really, uh, I love your podcast. I am a listener, a frequent oh, listener. Thank you. And I'm, I seriously am very honored to be here and try to represent our brand favorably. We are on script so far. You're reading verbatim off the prompter. <laughs> uh, really appreciate it. I also have a, I have a folder in my inbox that's just all of Brian's podcast uh, guest appearance requests. So it's we're, we're going to be able to empty that out now. So it's Good. nice. Good. No, but I, I think this is um, a, a fun topic of helping people learn again about different areas of the business that they may have a little bit of knowledge uh, about, but not a full depth of knowledge, but also some exciting things that are going on for you, like the rest of the company, uh, to a scale right now. Um, we usually like to start with the background of the guest to get your perspective of where we're going, but I think to help place where CFNA fits and where your background then fits into that in Bridgestone, let's start with what is CFNA and where does it fit in our universe? All right. CFNA, it's a great question, and you're right, Keith. Most people don't realize that CFNA has actually been around since the late 70s. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it was born out of the Firestone days. There's some, one of our forefathers at Firestone had the brilliant idea, hey, we should have a bank, a credit card bank, a special purpose credit card bank that will help our customers afford our products and services. Mm -hmm. And that's where CFNA was born. It was really born in the late 70s. It is based in Cleveland, Ohio. It is, is a, it is an Ohio special purpose charter bank. And today, uh, there are less than 10 such banks in the country. Hmm. And you wonder why is that? There used to be many more, but they, through consolidation and bank sales and what have you, they've just been whittled down to this exclusive group, which we are one, and we're proud of that. And our goal at CFNA is essentially to provide a credit card with promotional financing is the major uh, value proposition that we offer to folks uh, so that they can afford and have an option of, as their preferred way to pay in our stores. And uh, we have roughly 400 people that mm -hmm. sit in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, in one centralized building. It's one of our strategic strengths as we've been all together. And we have people that look like staff that are in the tower. <laughs> and then we have people with headsets on, kind of like <laughs> I have on today, that are answering customer service, collections, uh, merchant inquiries on a daily basis. And it's a very vibrant group. And uh, essentially, it's it's been in existence for a long time, supporting primarily consumers, yep. uh, not the commercial side of the business. We do support some commercial clients on a smaller scale, but it's really designed for people like you and me and our audience, people like us that need a credit card solution when they come to see us. Yeah, and I know you know we talk a lot about the footprints and obviously Bridgestone headquartered in Nashville, big tech center in Akron, Ohio, and we talk about the Firestone brand, mm -hmm. especially history in Ohio. A lot of people think of Akron, but we'll give the shout out. You said Cleveland Brook Park is Brook the is, Park. is the dot on the map, right? As an Ohio and East Cleveland kid, I know uh, the names of the towns, um, but that's where when we talk about the footprint of Bridgestone in Northeast Ohio, it's Akron, it's Ann Brook Park. There's Columbiana has mm -hmm. a Firestone Ag Testing Center. So it is a nice regional uh, footprint for us uh, that CFNA is a big part of that, uh, up there. Yeah. That's right. And people forget about that. But we uh, Bridgestone does have a great history, as you just described, 
of uh, the state of Ohio, you yeah. know, is really well represented in our ecosystem. And um, I'm just elated to be a part of it because I actually grew up like you. Yeah. I actually grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, this is now going to become a Northeast Ohio sports fandom <laughs> conversation. I'm We're a shifting off. Cleveland Browns So sorry, fan, everybody. So, oh. You know, it's just an and Cleveland Indians fan. <laughs> yeah, so my life is it just is built character for me, sir. Maybe we shouldn't go down that path. Yeah. We have we have too many open wounds to tend to <laughs> in that regard. Um, but so then we've we now see a little bit of what CFNA is, where it fits into the Bridgestone universe. So then what is your background uh, in your career and journey that has brought you now to president uh, and leader of CFNA. Yeah, my story, and I'm, I'm so fortunate to be here. I've been excited uh, throughout my six-year career. It'll be six years for me here in October, mm -hmm. and I have to thank T.J. Higgins. He's uh, my first boss and the person that was foolish enough. I would drop T.J.'s title right now, but it's very long, and I can't it, remember it all of it off the you top of my head. Just say global. Very important global executive of that, sorts, yes. That's <laughs> correct. He's a great, great man, but he hired me, and, and my background Keith is I've got over 25 years now of experience in financial services. I grew up um, in banking slash financial services and worked for, end up working 19 years in one spot, and that was with HSBC, who's a big international uh, bank. They bought uh, one of the U.S. based credit card organizations. But I've done a little bit of, I've done mortgage lending, I've done auto lending, I've done credit card lending. So I've done lending on several different product sets. And then I was hired to come to Bridgestone from Kohl's mm -hmm. department store. And I was living in Milwaukee, and most people don't know it, but Kohl's actually has one of the largest private label credit card portfolios in the world. Over 45 million people have a Kohl's charge yeah. in their pocket. And they love the Kohl's I'm, cash. I'm quite familiar. Look, this can be a whole different conversation. My mom is going to be listening to this one and only this one because she has questions about Kohl's cash. I'll have to get her some 30% off yeah. coupons. Mainly, I, I, she actually doesn't have questions about how to get more Kohl's cash because she spends Kohl's cash and then earns more Kohl's cash. So it's actually, she knows exactly how to get more Kohl's cash. So, so. I, I completely get it. So from that program, I learned a ton about rewards and loyalty and dealing with retailers. And that's uh, Bridgestone found me. And Bridgestone hired me away from Kohl's to come be the president here. And I succeeded uh, one of our great longtime executives. He had over 25 years with the company. He retired, uh, Dean Miller. And I was able to take over um, the portfolio and the president you know, chair at CFNA and have been uh, really trying to make great things happen with our team uh, throughout my six years. And so I've just, uh, that's where I've been planted. And my, my task was simple, Keith, uh, was take... What TJ said and others said, we think this business is really great, but we think it could be even better. So what ideas you have, and that's what the team and I have been trying to deploy here over uh, the last six years is trying to just do more, grow the portfolio profitably, serve our customers better. And as I like to say, Keith, our whole premise on this is we really are a loyalty program mm -hmm. wrapped around a credit card. And that's our goal, is to bring our customers back into our Firestone, Bridgestone locations, whether they're company-owned or they're our dealer affiliates. Dealer yeah. affiliates are just as important to us as we all know. So either way, our card is used in both channels, and we are just supposed to drive people back and hopefully complete that transaction, make them happy they're getting a good deal, um, and um, help them on their way, on their journey, if yeah. you will. And we talked a little bit before as we were kind of talking about the conversation here, but the value proposition, if you were, the, the value that CFNA can bring to the enterprise is multiple things, but one of them is helping to cultivate that loyal customer base to feel like you are a, a regular, so to speak, and this becomes, we always say F, FCACs and our BSRO locations are part of the communities, and this is what can help cultivate that feeling of being part of the community, right? Well said. Yeah. It's spot on. And, you know, besides, you know, our major value proposition, if you have one of our cards, is you get six months to pay for it. Six mm -hmm. months, you could pay it all in three payments or all in a sixth at a time. Any, any purchase over $150 or more. Mm -hmm. And that is the piece. But then beyond that purchase, we, through working hand in hand with our marketing areas, We'll give you coupons to come back in the store. We'll give you alerts about some of our epic promotions. So it really becomes a cohesive effort. It's very integrated, and that's how we win. And believe it or not, fun facts are 30 mm. percent. I hope we've got a long list of the over, first, over first fun 30, fact of the day. Over 30 percent of all the transactions that go on at one of our FCAC stores okay. goes on a 
Firestone card, a CFNA yield product. And in some markets, like in the Northeast, there are some of our markets, it's over 50%. Oh, wow. So imagine just the power of 50% of your customers coming back, having a preferred way to pay that keeps them coming back. Plus that, last fun fact here in this segment, is the average transaction is three times higher when they put it on our card than if they put it on someone else's card because they'll just realize that they could maybe not only take care of their tires, they can take care of other elements yeah. of their car. And so we get that bundled service piece going, and that's when you feel like a member. You yeah. feel like you've, you're have you getting something that maybe you won't get if you go across to your mechanic across yeah. the street. The peace of mind that comes with that, the thinking ease of ease. the Bridgestone E8 commitment. Uh, Good emotion. We are working through the connection points here. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I think that um, it, when I came to, to Bridgestone, I mean, and we, we have this conversation and a setup to questions similar to this a lot with our guests. What was their awareness level of what Bridgestone was when they joined? Mm -hmm. I, I had no clue that there was a, a credit division of Bridgestone when I joined the company. You being in that space, like when Bridgestone kind of came calling or when you saw the opportunity, like did you have awareness of that when you joined or before you joined? Keith, that's a great question. The answer is no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, when I was recruited, uh, they, I said, CF and who? <laughs> I really didn't know. And I've been in the industry for that long. But as soon as I researched it, I'll tell you what got me here and what keeps me going is I love the Bridgestone B. Yeah. I love our Firestone brands. Um, and when I saw that we had this credit card organization embedded inside of this great tire company, I just got more interested. And taking something that was curated and has been done very well over the years and then being given the opportunity to, to grow it and nurture it and hopefully make it even more than what it is, that's uh, been my six years and it still keeps me going. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things you wanted to talk about was why payments are so cool. So let's set up the question like you would like to have it set up, which is, Brian, why are payments or why is the world of payments so cool, man? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you <laughs> my girls ask me that all the time. I'm, I have three daughters at home. And they know what their dad does, but they're also like, why do you keep doing this? He's it's, the inventor of Kohl's yeah, cash. It, it, I wish I was that cool. I'm not that cool, sir. But really, if you think about just think about how you pay, the different ways that you pay. And even in the last 10 years, there's been more innovation in this space, if you really think about it, than um, almost you know, any other space you can think of. And what do I mean? For instance, do you, have a, do you pay via Venmo? I, I pay, have in, on occasion. On yes. occasion. But people now pay via Venmo. That's how my girls you know, want me to pay them. You know, the ease at which you can get access to move your checking savings mm -hmm. around, receive money, you know, et cetera. It's just exploded. And then the options of how you pay and even this new phenomenon, which everybody's talking about, buy now, pay later. Mm -hmm. When you go to a checkout and they'll say you can either pay this or you can pay it in four installments and things. That's a new explosion in the last three years. And so that combination of things is what's made payments cool. It's not stale. It's ever evolving. And the reality is everybody has to pay with something. <laughs> and furthermore, I tell my girls the reason why it's going to be cool is because probably in 10 years, I don't think we're going to have cash anymore. It'll all be digitized. You'll pay with your phone. You'll pay with a mobile wallet. Think about if, if you use you know, any of Apple Pay or have a, a mobile wallet. All these phenomenons are relatively 10 years new. Mm -hmm. That's why payments is cool is because it's never, it's never stale. And the challenges there are actually trying to f fun to overcome. And they're all, should be, they're all rooted in trying to meet customers' needs and expectations. And that's what these companies have been engineering. But and of course, it's money. Yeah. And so money always matters. Well, it, and it, I mean, you think of it like the world of finances has always even before digital was really a thing. There's aspects of digital because it's the idea of I have X amount of money in the bank, but it's not just a stack of dollars. That is that exact number sitting. It's it's a lot of moving around things that are not tangible at any certain time. So it makes some sense, I guess, that a, it's really a digital world is the banking world first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And now it's about how you keep doing it differently. But to your point, and one of the questions I wanted to ask, which is customer or consumer behavior, right? And we've talked a lot in different areas of not just Bridgestone, but the, the industry of transportation or the industry of, of consumer buying. Um, there it was already shifting uh, late 2010s, right? Mm -hmm. And That's then things accelerated by the pandemic. Right. How has 
how were things, I guess, trending in 1819? And then what was either accelerated or made drastically different from a consumer perspective in regards to CFNA? You, you nailed the timeline, Keith. Uh, 2010, it was kind of getting stale. And then it's really since 2010 has been accelerating. The hmm. big move has been everything's you know digital, including at checkout. So even when if someone's at a physical store location or perhaps how you buy on Amazon or even through a, a tire rack, one of our you know, dealer affiliates, you, everything's digital, that checkout piece. And they want to be easy, quick. They would love to get some extra points or coupons attached mm -hmm. to it. And that's been the big accelerant, especially here since the pandemic, is now uh, people expect it to be easy, quick and have options. They mm -hmm. just don't want to maybe pay one way. They might want to split it up into payments of four. And then last but not least, sir, they're really looking for pay me. I want some loyalty. <laughs> I want a coupon. Do you have a coupon? Or if I don't have something dollars off now, will I get it off later? Which we've been doing for a while, we being Bridgestone, with some of our Epic promotions where you could buy, get $70 mm -hmm. off, but if you put it on your CFNA card, you tilt it up to a hundred dollars. Yeah, people love that. You know, buy more, save more is a concept, and that's something I learned uh, before Bridgestone. Is people want value, and yeah. when you can offer them extra value at checkout, and that's been accelerated in the digital age, that is really part of the phenomenon that has been driving all this innovation and making it digital, simple, and uh, hopefully you get qualified. You know, easy too. It's much more. It's less intimidating yeah. to get underwritten and getting a line of credit than it was in 2010. That's the, the other piece that's accelerated is the ease of people to get credit in some form of financing has become also less intimidating. Hmm. And we try to follow along. We want to be, instead of 10 steps to go get your CFNA card, it's five. Yeah. And um, we just want to make that information flow quickly. And let's face it, at the end of the day, uh, when you're paying for tires and service, even if you love our stores, it's not the most glamorous transaction. It's not right. buying a 60-inch TV or a new Sono sound system or a new guitar. You know, you'd rather not have to spend the money. So we're trying to ease mm -hmm. and create that good emotion and connection to where people feel good about the back end of doing business with us. Yeah. And you don't want to do it again. You don't want to add the difficulty to something that is already precisely for for some for some and for many just like you said an experience that we just want to get over with and move on to yeah. to other things. Another fun fact yeah. before we go on sure. that validates that is 50% of Americans this has been true and I've been quoting this for the last handful of years but it's still true today. 50% of Americans are ill prepared for a surprise financing need hmm. of $500 or more. So just imagine when they come in our store, half the people likely, and it doesn't make a difference how you look or how you dress or whatnot, half the people aren't ready to spend that $1,000, which is probably a set of four. And uh, so once again, we have that way to say, we got you covered. Yeah. This isn't so bad. And my team feels that way, and it makes us, once again, it's another reason why we feel cool, because we actually feel like we're helping customers yeah. and uh, making them feel better about something that maybe. Not the funnest thing in the world. Yeah. Well, and I think there's there's different aspects, too, of that peace of mind feeling. So I, my wife and I had taken a road trip uh, at some point in our Bridgestone careers down to Florida, and I had an issue, and I had to stop into a Tires Plus. And we were talking to the guy, and it was in Gainesville, Florida, <laughs> so where the University of Florida is located. And we were just kind of talking to him as Bridgestone employees, curious and learning, and uh, which I guess is totally normal, right? Everybody's doing that. Um, but uh, he, I, I said, you know, what is your usual customer base? And he goes, obviously, it's a lot of college kids. And he's like, and you know, a lot of them pay with CFNA cards because it's something that parents set up for their kids to be away from home. They have problems. That whole peace of mind for Genius. both to, you're, to handle things You're spot, like you're spot on. That's the other thing we try to sell as a Valprop is you can do authorized users on our card. To, and all three of my daughters, you know, I've got one left in college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's got one of my cards. And I know she can't charge other things on it, which makes me feel good. That, that's peace of <laughs> it's mind. It's a controlled, Correct. cost control here. Yes. She's not going to go in and do something else. But all <laughs> seriousness, that does make it, it is a peace of mind for other folks that you can go ahead and create that other card that can have use. And we are national. Yep. You know, and, uh, you know, we have a very large footprint between all that. And so, you know, a CFNA card can actually be accepted at about 7,500 locations in the U.S. Yeah. So our breadth and depth of, of reach and touch points is pretty immense. And um, 
that also makes it fun. There you go. Well, we're turning this now into a, a, a parenting podcast. Uh, you get your drive guard tires, and you get a Messia Finet card, and they're going to be able to set themselves up to overcome a flat and get some unexpected service, and it's all taken care That's of. That's right. For, for all the road that. trips, Keith, like you and I used to do, life would be good. <laughs> there you go. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of the fun things. Uh, we talked about the trends and the things happening in the industry for CFNA right now. Um, you just went through a rebrand in the summer of 2022. Would love to know about the decision behind that, why now and, and why the direction, um, but also some exciting things that are coming up as following the rebrand on the horizon on the roadmap. Yeah, thank you, Keith. Yeah. And that's why I'm excited to be able to uh, unveil this to the folks that maybe don't know us quite as well, and you're helping me do that. So yeah. thank you. But CFNA.com would be a great place for our podcast listening audience mm -hmm. to go to. We just did a, uh, we upgraded our, we have a website. That's where you can go and not only get credit, but you can pay your bill and check us out. We also have educational tools out there um, because we feel strongly about trying to educate consumers um, and not just where some would say banks take advantage of mm -hmm. them. We want, we don't want to be that, that other side of the equation. But we, uh, to your good question, at CFNA, um, we just rebranded. Our brand and our logo really hadn't been touched in over 20 years. So we decided that uh, commensurate with another product they're gonna let me announce here today on your podcast, yeah. this was a great time to rebrand. So we have a brand new logo, those that can see me on the, uh, on the podcast out on YouTube at the right time, uh, go up, but CFNA.com has that brand new branding and we've really condensed the name. Part of that is we're no longer known as Credit First National Association. So I was already wrong off the top. That's we started okay, 0 for mate. 1. No, that's part of the education there processor. There you go. Is that now we're just going to be known as CFNA. Learn by doing. Um, just like Citibank used to be known as that, their city. So we're now CFNA, but we rebranded new color schema, new logo. It's a, you know, when you go out and click and look, it's a circular logo kind of meant to mimic, you know, what we do and some of our other branding elements at Bridgestone Plus even. It's got uh, new colors, but it's got, the, it's got the Firestone red in it. There you go. And so that's the whole idea is um, this was a great time to just refresh who we are, our brand values, what we're about. And we came up with the idea. It was fully endorsed by um, an integrated in approach with the rest of Bridgestone Marketing. And they thought it was a great time. And so this is a chance for us just to reattach who we are, why, and reaffirm those brand values and uh, just look a little bit more fresh on all fronts out in the marketplace. So it's live uh, as of July 1st. Okay. And then you said you, I, I was quite a tease in there. You said you're about to announce something here on the podcast, which was not planned, but mm -hmm. I welcome the opportunity to break news here well, in the studio. I am here to surprise and delight you, Keith, <laughs> because right here in my hands, you can't see it if you're on the podcast, but once again, you know, you, you'll see if you go out. I have a new card that we're going to be launching <laughs> early next year with MasterCard. It's uh -huh. going to be a co-branded credit card. And it's got the F-Shield on it, but it's issued by CFNA, but it's with MasterCard. And it'll be a, a, a currently our program is just you can only use the current CFNA private label card in our stores. You can't use it anywhere else, as we just joked. This card, I'll have uh -oh. to be careful about who I give it to <laughs> because you can use it anywhere. And the last daughter is almost out uh, of college, That's Brian. correct, so I'm going to wait. <laughs> uh, but she, uh, she'll get one. But this card can be used. We're going to have still our private label card for some customers, and then there are other customers who want more value. Sure. They, or they're more loyal, and they want to earn more points. This will be just like any other travel card or other card you know, that you get with cash back, yeah. and this will be good for earning points that you can redeem for cash back at our stores. Well, there you go. So we're going to have a whole point schema uh, along with this, but this is the this is the brand new card, and you know what, Keith, I'll make sure you're qualified for one. So. That sounds <laughs> worth enough for you to visit in here. Today. Yeah, so, oh, right. But we're launching this um, next year. Some of our current customers will get the new card. Some will get a new rebranded uh, private label card and stay exactly where they're at, or they'll select up. And then this will be a new way we can uh, originate new accounts between the two products. And we think what that'll do is just propel us to serve more customers because some people will say, well, I, this card doesn't have enough value for me. So now for those customers that want more value, more points and some more earning power, this will be their ticket. And we're, we're also going to have a new rewards program on our current program that will also accelerate your ability to buy more and save more by virtue of discounts at the store. And that's what's coming out first quarter of next year. We'll start this process. And we're excited, too, because we're working with MasterCard, another global brand 
<laughs> that loves us, that's going to be great to cozy up with us and hopefully add more value to um, us, not only here in the States, but who knows, maybe a part of our mobility solutions play, this could help some of our other countries outside of the Americas also create some new relationships with MasterCard's help that could extend yeah. to a global reach. Well, I think, I mean, it's we, we've talked a lot on the different conversations of the podcast here with the different topics of co-creation, right? And so we think a lot of it in the tire or the mobility solutions, the technology space. But again, I mean, in every part of Bridgestone, we're looking for ways with industry leaders to co-create or to partner together to drive change in value. And so a nice example of it right there. That is, thank you for that. That yeah. is, you're exactly right. This is a chance where they're going to teach us some things. They're going to help drive new customers into our um, our stores, bo you know, both company-owned stores as well as our dealer affiliates. So we just look this as a co-creation win. Yeah. And if MasterCard could be here on the podcast, they would express how excited they are. They, w they will love having our Chevron uh, on uh, their partnership list. And I think we're going to feel the same way once this gets going. And it's going to take it a couple of years for it to really seed and nurture and for the program to grow. But we think this has the opportunity to double the size of CFNA. Oh, wow. And if we can do that for the company and help drive more customers, that's where I have uh, lots of excited business partners who are anxious to try to get this card up and running. And uh, I, my hat's off to my team because they're the ones that are helping co-create partner and it's a big lift like any new product is yeah. uh, for us but it's one of the new products that bridgestone's excited to bring to the market like the some of the rest of the products that you've had on yeah. and the podcast we're just uh, we're trying to keep up with them yeah well i, I think that you, you mentioned the the team behind making all of this happen i think that's a nice place for us to go as we kind of wrap up our, our conversation together i did I, I wanted to touch on as well but for really just for people to learn more about as we talk about co-creation or investing in new things and learning in the trends of the industry uh, we recently had a strategic investment in something called car iq that's an autonomous vehicle payment solution mm -hmm. so as we talk about the worlds of where all of this stuff ties together in an autonomous vehicle vehicle and a platform, that's something that could be coming uh, down the road and, and something to learn from. But I, I do want to spend the last couple minutes on the team because we have our team as a pillar of our North Star, something that Paulo and our leadership has been very focused on, the culture that we have at Bridgestone and supporting our people to support the company. And I think CFNA has continuously been a really shining example of that. Three years running, a best place to work workplace in Cleveland, Ohio, and in Northeast Ohio. Um, but we've seen even internally the engagement around learning about the North Star, communicating around the direction that we're going. The group at CFNA always seems to be very engaged in it. Uh, I mean, what's what makes that happen? Yep. Thanks, Keith, for yeah. that recognition. We have we just won our third year in a row of being recognized as a top workplace in the greater Cleveland area, um, and that's done via survey, like the Bridgestone engagement survey we mm -hmm. just all went through, and um, and we work at it. And what we've done on the is just one facet, but one of the things we've tried to do on the North Star, Keith, is personalize it. We've taken the framework of the North Star, and I'd encourage us to any leader that's listening that's on our roster take it and then make it yours, customize it, um, and show it to some folks and get some ideas. And for instance, one of those ideas is we created a dashboard, a North Star dashboard. I update it at the end of every month. I put a little narrative associated with it. It's color coded. And I think that's helped drive our engagement because people, it helps drive vision, where we're going. And we talk about it too, not only how CFNA is doing, but we talk about, I talked about how proud I am uh, to be with Bridgestone and Firestone, we make sure we always reference the greater good, the enterprise hat, yep. and talk about what else is going on. Because even if maybe we're having a tough time, usually somebody else is doing something good that we can attach into. And that combination of a communication plus personalizing the the North Star and now E8, and pulling those elements and talking about them continuously, yeah. but making them relevant is where you get the engagement scores going. And then people want to be a part of that. And I think oh, last piece, Keith, just be genuine. Yeah. You know, I I like to try, and we've have a, we've always had a fine relationship. You know, let, let's let's let me learn a little bit about you personally. Let me learn a little bit about you professionally. Let me show I care in genuine ways. And when you throw that combination in there, including good coaching and goal setting, people want to do good work. Yeah. 
a lot of times they just don't know what's at stake. When you tell them what, what the, what's at stake, they will rise up and they will, you can rally anything together. And that's what I've seen in my career. And I, I've especially seen it my six years um, in CFNA. And I feel a heavy duty to keep that going. Well, I mean, it's a nice kind of way to cap off what is an exciting time for CFNA right now, which is part of an exciting time. We always say, or he'll hear Paulo as well reinforce, exciting things happening across Bridgestone, this being one of them. Um, we covered financial topics. We covered leadership and, and teammate engagement. We talked about uh, sad Cleveland sports, <laughs> technology, and future. This podcast had something for everyone, I feel, in here. Uh, let's hope so, <laughs> as well as teaching maybe some tips and tricks on paying. There were fun so, facts. It was great. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed being here, and I appreciate the opportunity to tell the story about what we're doing. And once again, I'm just one of many. We all have so many good stories to tell, and I think the podcast is great for that. So thank you. Yeah, well, I appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. You're welcome. So you heard it here first, some big things ahead for CFNA as they carve their own path in co-creation and growth with industry-leading partners like MasterCard to help drive peace of mind, flexibility, and a stronger relationship with our consumers and customers. As always, going to give you a rundown of how you can engage with us. Remember that every episode of Thrive is available wherever it is you listen to podcasts. You can hear season three and forward, or watch season three and forward, that is, also on the Bridgestone America's YouTube page. And of course, wherever you hear us or watch us, feel free to give us a rating, a review, tell us how we're doing, or you can always send a question, episode idea, or feedback via email as well to thrivepodcast at bfusa.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Keith Colley telling you to keep on keeping on and remember that at Bridgestone, today, tomorrow, together we thrive. Be good, everybody.